What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a little title called Space Beast Terror Fright that's been in development for like a really, really long time. And I'm happy to say that the wait was worth it. This game is actually pretty good. Uh, so what is Space Beast Terror Fright? If you've never heard of the game before, this is effectively a game where you are a colonial marine that is going on board procedurally generated abandoned derelict space hulks with the intent of destroying them. Effectively, you are the intergalactic garbage crew. Uh, so if there's a ship that's floating out in the middle of nowhere and nobody knows what happened to the crew, you go on board and it's your job to self-destruct the thing. And so ultimately the goal of this game is to go inside of a space hulk, turn on the power. Once you've done that, you have to download all the data from the ship. Once you've downloaded all the data from however many data terminals there might be, you have to initiate the self-destruct procedure inside the main core reactor and in fact this game is pretty good don't let the graphics fool you like this game very much has the graphics of kind of like system shock era first person shooters uh but with tighter textures but that's okay we live in the world of indie games where retro is nowtro and so anyways the game actually turns out to be pretty fun this game is playable with up to four players i've been playing by myself as you can see right now there's only 18 people playing the game so i don't know what your chances are of finding a lobby i haven't really played around with multiplayer at all and so i can't tell you if it's hosted peer-to-peer -peer. I think it uses Steam servers but like I'm not super sure it does have a play on Steam option where you can like open up a lobby and whatnot but for the purposes of today's video so that we don't have to deal with people talking and people voiping and all that kind of stuff uh, we're just gonna play on single player for about 30 minutes and I'll introduce you to the game and we'll see if we can get you comfortable with the game I do have one or two things that I wish were a little bit different about the game but we'll talk about those at the end of the video rather than right now so let's jump on into local. Uh, in local, basically all we have to do is pick our weapon and our loadout, and then we just go straight into instant action. It's going to procedurally create a derelict for us to go through, and hopefully it all goes well. I haven't survived yet. I've been playing for about three hours, have not survived the game. Your average match in this game is usually about six to 15 minutes, depending on how well it goes. It can be as short as one minute. It can be as long as 20 minutes. It just sort of depends how friendly the ship decides to be to you. Uh, one thing I do like about this game, it is highly customizable. Uh, everything about this game can be fiddled with. So you can take a random seed and then you can edit all the things inside the random seed. You can go with an explicit seed, which is where you type one in so that you can practice on the same ship over and over again. You can randomize everything. There's the mission of the day where you can compete with other players to see who can clear it the fastest. Uh, you've got the campaign of the week where you can go through and see who can get the best st uh, score of the week clearing out the campaign. There's the kit mode. Uh, the kit mode allows you to have, like, uh, I guess, fixed upgrades that you have from the beginning of the game. And then there's also user-generated missions right here, uh, where basically there are there's a map editor that comes with the game. And the map editor allows you to make your own maps, which means that this game should technically have, like, endless content with it. I couldn't figure out a way to get out of the custom menu right there. Like, there was no back button or anything. I probably just missed it, so I just backed out of the entire thing. But yeah, the game is highly customizable. I mean, if you go into the settings, everything about the UI and the HUD and everything else is going to be customizable. Fantastic work by the developer there. This gameplay experience can be exactly what you want it to be in most cases. If there's something you don't like about the UI, change it. And that's about as easy as it goes. In fact, I have highly customized my settings uh, prior to recording this video because there was a bunch of stuff about the default gameplay that I didn't like. But luckily, most of it is just a slider or a click away. And so very, very good stuff. Uh, for right now, I've got myself a rifle and an SMG as my loadout. Let's go ahead and launch the mission. Uh, I think we're probably going to die pretty quickly on this because I'm going to be moving slowly because I need to explain everything. Uh, but here we are, well, as soon as my visualization loads. All right, so we've got to download six data cores. The ship's power is off, so we got to pry open this bulkhead right here. And it looks like we got an industrial ship. There are different tile sets to the game. There's military ships, industrial ships, all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, the telltale signs of the Xeno are here. There's the power breaker, so we've accomplished our first objective, and we've turned on the power. Uh, in the top left-hand corner, you can see my upgrades. Well, along the top of the screen, I guess you can see the upgrades. Uh, the one in the top left is your download speed. The one in the middle is how fast your battery recharges when interacting with a terminal. The one on the right is your battery remaining, and you can see it draining out right there. Your flashlight will get dimmer as that goes down, so don't let it go down. Uh, luckily, anytime you interact with anything that's hooked up to the power grid, it recharges your battery, so no biggie. Uh, that's our first data core right there, and we got a mod that allows us to detect the airlock. 
Okay, that's fine. Not super useful, but it's better than nothing. Looks like our next data core is over here, and in fact, I see it. Let me activate this sentry right here. The only downside to these auto turrets right here is they can sometimes shoot you. And when they shoot you, it hurts. It hurts a lot. And so anyways, uh, this game is permadeath. This game is a roguelike. And it's a roguelike in the classic sense, in that, like, you continue doing ships until you die. That's pretty much it. Uh, I haven't made it past the first ship ever. I'm a little bit embarrassed admitting that. But this is actually a pretty hard game when you're playing by yourself because you can't check every corner. Like, oh, we got infravision. Nice. So now I've got predator vision, as you can see. Uh, be careful about your predator vision, though. Your predator vision drains your batter. Oh, the power just went out. Uh, we got to find a breaker before the aliens hit us in the dark. I think the breaker is maybe over here. Yeah, breaker's right here. There we go. All right, so we got the breaker, and here's our next data core. We'll grab that real fast, and hopefully we get a decent upgrade out of this. No sight, no visual on uh, Charlie yet. As you can tell, I'm very paranoid. This game does a fantastic job of cultivating, like, an atmosphere of basically anxiety and uncomfortableness. Um, if you're not okay with that, this probably will not end up being the game for you. This is a game that thrives on making you feel nervous, and in fact, it does. This is a very, very nerve-wracking game. I'm going to turn on this sentry before I decide to hack this gate. There's a laser gate right there as well. I'll probably activate that so that I can hack the data core console safely. And there we go. Turret's activated. Laser gate is online. Any alien that runs through that is going to die instantly. Let's go ahead and get our downloads done. We actually have an okay run going right now. You might have noticed the XP at the top of the screen. You don't level up or anything. All of the upgrades in this game are random. Uh, so we got 100 extra ammo capacity from that terminal right there. All the upgrades are random. The XP is basically just your score, how well you're doing. And in fact, it ticks up second by second. And with every single data core you take, every single alien you kill, basically the better you're doing, uh, you're going to have more and more score. Uh, let's go this way, I guess. It looks like the last data core is towards the reactor. Oh, we have contact. Where is he? Uh, close the door. Uh, he's definitely this way. Although, where this way, I don't know. The music is in tune with how close the aliens are to you, uh, which can be remarkably frenetic and terrifying. My battery's about to go out. I'm going to activate this turret. Uh, I think the alien is just... There he is. The gunplay does feel good in this game in kind of like a retro shooter sort of way. Dude, I really need this turret online. There we go. Turret's online. Data core looks like it's this way, uh, which is good because we'll be covered by the turret while we're hacking this data core. So let's get it real quick. I think they're trying to break through the door over there. Yeah, they are. You can see the door deforming. Uh, last data core is in that direction, though, so we kind of need to go that way. Not, not ideal. As you can tell from the gunplay, this game is very much not a game for people with epilepsy to play. There are a lot of flashing lights. I've actually got most of them turned off right now, in case you were wondering. Like, I have the vast majority of the, the lighting effects turned off. Trying to make sure they're not coming in from behind me. All right. Uh, let me reload on ammo real quick. All right, ammo's good. We're going to go ahead and activate this last data core. Oh, there he is! Okay, okay, you died a one hit, so you don't want to get hit. Like, there's very few things in this game that don't insta-give you. So, like, don't get touch... No touchy the alien. That's the, that's the secret to the game, is no touchy the alien. All right, so we've got our stuff lined up. We just have to find the reactor now, and we've got to put it into a meltdown. Keep falling back towards our turret. Maybe close off the laser gate. Ah, get zapped, nerd. That's what you get. Uh, let's close off some of these side doors. Let them keep getting zapped. I've got about 500 rounds, so we're good on that front. The coolant assembly is over here. The good news is, though, we have a turret in this room, so we should be able to get the meltdown going without too many problems. Come on, open faster. Everything in this game happens at, like, a snail's pace just to really ratchet up the anxiety and make you feel like you're in trouble. If the power goes out during this, we are in big trouble, though. All right, so we can activate this guy. Let's go ahead and disable the coolant shielding. Come on. 
Coolant shielding one is down. Coolant shielding two. Score is looking pretty good right now. I'm pretty happy with our XP. After we do these, the core is going to start to melt down, and we got to make it back to the airlock. Uh, that's going to be the final part of our terrifying, harrowing space deployment. We do have an alien coming from that way. I'm going to light up the hallway a little bit. I love the blood and gore effects as the bullets fly around, like how you get the drips off the walls and like off the various things, like the little flecks of spittle and whatnot that are coming down off the ceiling in the areas that are corrupted by the xenomorphs. Just looks absolutely great. All right, so we've shut that down. Now we've got to run for our lives. That's pretty much it. Uh, the airlock is about 40 meters away. I'm going to do my best in this case to try to lock doors behind me. Uh, it's not letting me lock doors behind me. we got to go this way. There's our airlock, dude. That's our exit. Come on. Come on. This might be my first W, and I'll get it live. Hey, we made it. All right. That's the good stuff right there. We got our first W. Back on into the fray. Ain't no rest for the wicked. Uh, we do keep our upgrades in between runs. And so anyways, you just kind of want to go as far as you possibly can without getting annihilated. All right, so let's take a look. Over. That's pretty much the whole of the entire game right there. Uh, one thing I would like to see is like a lot more kind of variety added on in. I do think the game is remarkably tense and really, really fun. Uh, but definitely more randomized objectives and things. Like, there's one that I haven't seen that I've heard people talking about where there's, like, scientists or something, and you've got to, like, escort them while you're doing your mission. Like, things like that. Yeah, dude, that's what gets me husky. That's the good stuff right there. Uh, looks like the data core is back this way. We've got to get four of them? Okay, there's going to be a lot of walking and not a lot of data coring. I'm going to activate this gate behind me. In fact, I'm going to cordon off this entire area. Go ahead and turn you on, turn you on. Hopefully the power doesn't go out. I don't think we have a laser gate on that side. So let's just knock out half of our objective right here. Okay, our infravision has been powered up. It's even stronger than it was. That's good. The resolution's been increased on it. You tried to creep up on me. 75% infravision. Very nice. Okay. Our next data core is this way. I'll probably just crack this door open. And then close it off right behind me. I find that it's good to really, like, quarantine and segment out the base as you move through it. Uh, data core is kind of in that diagonal direction. So we need to hang a righty right here. Oh, there was one behind me. He got me. And there goes my character, man. My character's been killed. I love that they give you, like, this mausoleum of all of the characters that you've played, along with, like, their highest achievable score. Like, I, I really, really, really like that. It really makes the body count, like, incredibly apparent. It would be even better, too, if it had, like, a little number right here, so you could actually figure out how many of... How many characters you've actually played so far. But honestly, I think the way that this game really makes itself remarkable is just due to the fact that, like, they've got the graphics and the lighting at just, like, the perfect level. Uh, so, like, the game is dark, but it's just light enough for you to vaguely see movement and be like, oh, God, mag dump it! Like, and that's really, really, really good for making the game feel tense and making the game feel cramped and making the game feel claustrophobic. And there's our first data core right there. The other thing that it does is it actually kind of hides the fidelity of the graphics. So since the graphics are very much tooled after like older first person shooters, like Half-Life 1 and, you know, System Shock and stuff like that, uh, because it's tooled after older games, the dimness of the lighting actually helps hide that a little bit and kind of muddy it all together to where it doesn't actually feel that outdated or it doesn't actually feel like it's that old uh, once you actually look at it. Like, I have seen the models for the aliens uh, when, like, I'm in the light, basically, and the models are pretty, pretty simple. But given the relative dimness and darkness of the game, it actually helps keep them cryptic, too. So all you really ever see from them is kind of just, like, squirming movement in the dark, you know what I mean? And they're just like, ah, magged up it! Kill it, kill it, kill it! 
Uh, I, I feel like that's an area where the game actually made like a really elegant decision to amplify the gameplay and also the presentation. Uh, I don't know where our next data core is going to be at. I'm just trying not to be anywhere near the breaches. So the basic flow of the game is that as you play, the longer you're inside the wreck, there's going to be holes in the ceiling and in the floor that open up. And that's where the aliens come from. In fact, you can see one right there sparking on the ceiling. And really, they never stop spawning once there's a hole. That's what you have to be kind of like really, really aware of, is that once there's a hole, there's really not a lot of great ways around that. I would like to see some kind of utility added to the game, maybe limited spawn on each map, uh, where you could effectively fix a breach and like close it off. I don't know how we're gonna get this data core. We're getting hit from two angles right now. This is really sketchy. Three angles, even better. Uh, we got to get out of here. Turn on that gate. Turn on. Oh, the power just went out. We're dead. Ah, dude, the power went out at the worst moment. We would have been safe. I was going to activate that laser gate right there, and then the power kicked out on us, so I had to find another breaker. All right, launch the mission. Let's go. Back into the fray. Ain't no rest for the wicked. All right. Private Tim Haslop, I'm so, so, so sorry. Like, you really, really, really should have rethought that enlistment bonus. I can virtually promise you it's not going to be worth it at the end of this. Uh, so it looks like our data core is to the right, from what I can tell with the proximity. Unfortunately, this is kind of a sprawly ship. Lots of long corridors. That makes me feel nervous. I don't like that. Okay, battery power is getting kind of low on the flashlight. I don't care what we do. We just need to do something to recharge our flashlight. It's going to slowly start turning red. And there's not going to be much we can do about that. Uh, we do have alien contact up here. Uh, the muzzle flash is quite bright in this game. I would like to see an option, given the level of customizability that exists inside the UI. I would like to see the ability to make the muzzle flare larger or smaller. Like, I know gameplay-wise why they did that. Uh, it's because in this game, uh, your eyesight is basically a resource. And firing your gun diminishes that resource and makes it more dangerous. Dude, this place is infested. This is the most contact I think I've ever seen in such a short amount of time. Oh, they're on the other side of the door, too. Yeah, we're... Wow, dude, that was a rough one. I don't know what that ship was, but that ship was... A, I'll tell you what it was. It was a hot mess. Even with a team, that would have been nasty. All right, so we are on a ship. This one, the power's on, so that's not too bad to start out with. Uh, the buttons can be hidden by the slime. That's actually an intended gameplay mechanic. Uh, don't freak out too much about it. Uh, we do have a data core over here. Let's go grab that real fast. Uh, there's already two breaches opened up right now. That's bad. Four breaches opened up, actually. Okay. Yeah, this is going to get a little bit nasty. We did, get a, we did get a directional motion tracker, though, as our bonus from that data core, which I think should work out fine just fine. Uh, let's grab this one. We've got to get 12 of these things, and so this is going to be a little bit longer of a mission. We're going to be kind of hoofing it. I don't know if the game tailors how many enemies you get hit by based on the amount of data cores you have to grab. Given the relative viciousness of this little roguelike, I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably not. Uh, it's probably equally as vicious no matter how many objectives you got to tap on, but, you know, one can dream. Uh, we got aim assist right there. What aim assist does is aim assist. It puts a little exclamation point on enemies so that you can fire through your muzzle flare. That's another reason why the muzzle flare is so large is because it directly makes aim assist a thing that you actively want on your playthroughs to get as an upgrade. And so anyways, Drake Callum. Sucks to be you, man. Uh, 90 seconds on the battery. That's good. That's actually a really, really advantageous upgrade. Looks like our next data core is off to the left somewhere. We do have motion detected. On both sides of us, actually. I'm going to get that door shut to buy me a couple seconds. Yeah, I see a lot of exclamation points. Oh, boy. Are we, like, in the nest right now? Jesus. Oh, yeah, there's a breach right there. Ah, I pushed it too aggressive. 
Okay, but yeah, I would love to see a way to seal breaches or for it to go on kind of like a wave-based mode. Like, the enemies perpetually spawning is mostly fine while you're moving around through facilities, but what will frequently happen is you'll have a corridor that ends with a dead-end room. Like, a data core will be in that dead-end room, and a breach will open up in that room, and it's just, like, utterly almost, like, impossible to get in there. Uh, in my experience, to get that last data core, which effectively just ends with kind of sort of almost a soft lock, basically. Or I guess like a cold war between you spraying bullets and the aliens trying to get to you. Uh, so anyways, an ability that would allow you to like seal like a sealant laser or something to seal off a breach. Not a ton, but like one or two per mission would be really, really nice. We have turrets on this mission, which is good. Let's grab this first data core right here. We have no breaches opened up yet, knock on wood. Okay, uh, we got battery life on that first one. Very nice. Let's grab this other core over here, and I see another one at the end of the hall. There's 20... Oh, my God, there's 23. Good Lord, baby Jeebus. Sorry, Philippe Kakor. You're not making it off this boat. I hate to tell you. This is where you need to have four people because you can split up in, like, teams of two and hit them all and have one point man that's just, like, covering everybody and then one guy that's, like, basically on the op. Oh, that's terrible. I can't believe you've done this. Uh, my helmet lamp has been damaged. Yeah, download, download, download. We got to get this core. Oh, dude, there was a safe laser right there. I didn't see it. I could have, uh, what I could have done right there is I could have hit the laser gate. That was the solution. I saw it as I was falling to the ground dying. If I had ran through and hit the laser gate, we would have been good because then it would have quarantined that little area off and we wouldn't even had to fire a shot. All right, breaker box, where are you? Breaker box. Right there. I see it. All right, let's get this breaker box. Get the lights back on. And our first data core is right over here. We need 19 of them. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hopefully, we get some download speed upgrades. Okay, so we've got a Pathfinder that'll take us to the Armory. Uh, the Armory is actually a really unique thing about this game. Uh, I like the Armory. So the Armory is a special room that spawns on some ships, and it has a map on it that shows where all the enemies are and all the objectives are. And this is cool, because if you're playing multiplayer, you can have one player lock themselves inside the Armory room and then guide everybody else, because they can see everyone on the map along with all the contacts, all the enemies, all the objectives. And so you can actually have one person that's basically like a spotter for the entire team if you can find the Armory. And I think that's actually like a really, really cool emergent gameplay thing. Get out of here. That's a really cool emergent gameplay thing. That, I, that The first time I saw it, I was like, oh, that's so sick, dude. I really, really like that. All right, so let's see if we can find another data core around here. We do have a little bit more contact than I like dealing with. I was trying to hit the door on the way by, but it didn't go that way. Oh, hello, boys. Okay, that's one. There's a reload station right there, so we can grab that. Oh, the armory. I guess it, it's, it's pointing to the armory boxes. I thought they were talking about the armory room. Uh, there's basically like a map room. I thought it was called the armory, but I guess not. Uh, we got some ammo capacity right there, which is really nice. Reload my ammo. Okay, we're wrap tap bang. We've got another data core right here. Unfortunately, it's right next to a corner, so this is going to get dangerous. Enemies moving in on us, and contact there. Oh, that scared me. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, we got another batch of ammo here. Oh, dude. We got hit from every direction right there, man. But as you can see, this is definitely a rogue-like. This is not a rogue light. Like, this is a game that desperately... And absolutely, like, slaveringly, droolingly, hungrily, it wants you dead. 
That's pretty much all that you can say about it. And so anyways, I've been really, really enjoying my time with this game. I think it's a really good game. It's a simple game, but it's a game that hits all the right notes for me as like an alien fan that's been a fan since I was a kid. And so anyways, I'm going to run a mission. Let me give you some of my, like, I guess abridged thoughts about the game. Things I think it could be doing better. Things I think, th you know, things I think that it's doing really, really well and things I think I could, it could be doing like a little bit better. So yeah, I like this game a lot. I think that the gunplay feels fluid and tight and the sound effects and soundtrack are more or less perfect for cultivating an atmosphere of dread. And I think while the graphics may not be completely modern, it's still a nice callback to the games from when I was in high school. The runs do feel sufficiently interesting as you play along with maps and locations and upgrades being randomized. And honestly, it feels fresh every time. It's a great game to knock out a run if you've got 20, 30 minutes to game and not much more than that. I can't speak to the quality of the multiplayer experience. I didn't get a chance to try it out. However, this is a concise game that has a very strong sense of identity. Like, it knows what it is. And in that understanding of itself, like, it knows that it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea on the default settings and whatnot. And thus, the developer has gone out of his way to provide a huge amount of customization options so that you can tailor the experience to be what you want it to be. It's oppressive. It's dark. It's deadly. It's over in an instance if you slip up. And honestly, that facet of the gameplay has made me a believer in this one. Uh, I only have two sticking points, and the first one is A, I wish you could resize the muzzle flare. Like, I understand that the muzzle flare is the way that it is on purpose to accentuate the fact that you're focusing your fire on one visual point and have thus lost your peripheral vision, kind of in that tunnel vision of combat, i.e. it's there on purpose to be an inconvenience and sort of amplify the terror of the situation because you can't cover your blind spots alone. Uh, but for me personally, I would like to resize it. I did customize my graphics a ton for this video, though. Probably took me about 20 minutes or so to get it just right, like doing a run and then fiddling with a slider, doing another run, fiddling with a slider, and I'm more or less happy with the gameplay with the settings that I've put on board. Uh, my B point is actually not really a complaint about the game. I just want more stuff. I'm being greedy here. That's pretty much it. I want more floor plans, more objectives, gun customization, all that kind of fun stuff for the in-between meta progression, in-between runs, but honestly, I understand if meta progression runs counter to the original vision of the game that might actually make it a lot less difficult and I do think that the difficulty is actually part of why the winds feel so good in this game. Uh, nonetheless, if you're looking for a game that I think magnificently captures the magic of the Aliens film or Space Hulk's corridor crawling carnage, uh, you'll probably find a lot to like here if you can get over the antiquated graphics and the setup time it's going to take to get the settings just right for your personal playtime. Uh, Space Beast Terror Fright, folks. It's available for $15 on Steam right now, and I think it provides a wonderfully unique experience. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today we had Space Beast Terror Fright. Tomorrow we will have something else. It's been my pleasure to be your host. Thank you for giving me the luxury of your attention, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.